What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome back to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and Liverpool have a big boost in the Timo Werner transfer saga because the Mirror newspaper is reporting that Bayern Munich have pulled out of negotiations because it looks like RB Leipzig want 50 million pounds for Timo Werner who doesn't have many years left on his contract and even Leipzig CEO Ralf Rognick confirmed that Werner didn't sign a new contract so he is free to leave and move to either Liverpool or, or Bayern or Dortmund or Paris Saint-Germain so they mentioned Liverpool as well in that interview and Bayern were considered the slight favorites for the 23 year old Timo Werner who scored 19 goals this season for Leipzig but it looks like they reportedly having have turned their attention towards Manchester City's Leroy Sané and there has been a confirmed like 70 million pound bid from Bayern Munich to sign Leroy Sané so Bayern definitely want to direct their funds and their attention towards Leroy Sané and that leaves the door open for Liverpool to make an offer one stumbling block according to the mirror report could be the fee but let me know guys do you think Timo Werner is worth 50 million pounds for Liverpool right now should we pursue him in this summer transfer window let me know in the comments below do you want Liverpool to sign him is uh, the 50 million pounds a little bit too much I think maybe we could compromise on a 40 million pound uh, transfer fee and I want Liverpool to sign him because Timo, Timo Werner is a huge, huge talent. He's a German international. He's quite experienced already in international football, in the Champions League as well. And he, I think, can only get better. As I said, he's still a very young player, only 23 years old. And under Jurgen Klopp, he could really improve. And guys, if you enjoy these types of transfer news videos, please leave a like. It just takes a second for you guys to press that like button. And it really helps me out and shows me that you guys enjoy these videos. And Liverpool have history with Leipzig. We already negotiated a pre-contract deal with them for Nabi Keita and we let Nabi Keita stay for one more year and then we signed him, we signed him. so we already have a, a, a relationship with Leipzig so I don't think uh, Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool would have any trouble negotiating a, a decent transfer fee and a contract with Timo Werner I'm sure that Timo Werner would love to play on the Jurgen Klopp because Werner is German, Jurgen Klopp is German I'm sure that Jurgen Klopp has watched Timo Werner extensively because he's watching the Bundesliga and Werner actually started his career at Stuttgart he became the club's youngest ever goal scorer at the age of 17 before making the move to Leipzig in 2016 and last season he scored 16 goals in 30 Bundesliga appearances and he also won in total 25 caps for Germany and scored 10 goals already for Germany in 25 caps which is a decent goal scoring return it is not clear because Werner hasn't come out and explicitly said whether he would favor a German career in the near future or whether he would love to play in the Premier League he doesn't he didn't really specify uh, either way but at this stage of his career, the lure to play on the Jurgen Klopp and to play for the European champions Liverpool might be too tempting to resist and to turn down. He might uh, find it difficult to, though to break into the Liverpool first team because we already have an established strike force with Salah, Firmino and Mane. But I think against the smaller teams, we could adopt a formation where we play Werner up front, Firmino just behind him, Salah on the right, Mane on the left and against the bottom 10 teams in the Premier League we could certainly do that because I think that against a team like Norwich or a Bournemouth or a somebody like um, Newcastle I think we could get away with, especially at home, with just playing with Fabinho and Henderson as a two or Fabinho and Milner or Henderson and Wijnaldum and just play four attackers and really go ham on these uh, smaller sides and of course there has been already confirmation that Daniel Sturridge is leaving Liverpool his contract is up we already said our goodbyes Ryan Brewster doesn't have a full season yet as a professional footballer he's only 19 years old he's coming back from one year injury so do we really want to rely on Brewster 
to help if uh, Firmino get in injured or if Firmino is tired. And I think that we need to sign an attacker. And I, I don't really have a preference. I would uh, support Jurgen Klopp, whoever he chooses. We are linked with so many great players. Nicolas Pepe, Timo Werner, Nabil Fakir, loads of uh, great attacking players. And I think uh, this summer Liverpool won't like spend nowhere near the amount that we we spent on on a, on the players La, last summer we spent something like 150 175 million pounds something like that but we needed big players like Alisson like Fabinho like Naby Keita and also we signed Shakiri as well this summer it might be two or three players who come in to help the team and help the squad be bigger and stronger because remember that Liverpool will be in seven competitions next season but I think we need to improve we can't stand still because I'm I think that Manchester City will increase their squad depth and they will sign more players so Liverpool have to do the same and Liverpool have to improve and and what we should do is uh, we should try and make Liverpool stronger every single transfer window. And if there is an opportunity to sign Timo Werner, I think we should go for it, honestly. Because, as I said, he is a very, very fast striker, very good at acceleration and pace, which allows him, of course, to get away from defender. And he is a very, very good... Uh, he has a very good goal-scoring record. He has scored 61 goals in 112 appearances for RB Leipzig. And he has great finishing, great composure in front of goal. And he is maybe not as clinical as he could be, but remember that he's only 23 years old. So for a youngster who is not really a, uh, like an experienced striker yet, these numbers are brilliant. He is having basically one goal every two games on average. And I think this could really help Liverpool put uh, Liverpool maybe above Manchester City next season. I honestly think that if we could get another 10-15 goals to our team, because our defense is already great, that would be brilliant. And uh, Ragnick uh, spoke on a German... Uh, television station Sport 1 and he said Werner has implied that he will not renew the contract our position is that if uh, Werner does not re renew his contract he should change clubs he would first have to agree with the club and this club would have to uh, contact RB Leipzig which has not happened yet to my knowledge so at the moment it looks like Timo Werner is up for grabs and it's up to Liverpool to contact uh, Werner to see whether he's interested in coming to Liverpool and also to contact RB Leipzig and make an offer and I think uh, Liverpool should go for it. But what do you think? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And another very interesting transfer news, according to Sempre Milan, which is an Italian a news outlet, Liverpool decided to sell Lovren and AC Milan want to sign him. And according to Daily Times journalist Paul, Paul, Paul Joyce, Liverpool want 25 million for Dejan Lovren. But this report claims that uh, this uh, offer of 18 million will be accepted by Liverpool. So it's very, very strange, very interesting that in Italy some newspapers are already reporting that Lovren is on his way to Milan. And does that mean that Liverpool will pursue a new centre-back? I, I really hope that we go for Delict, but I'm hearing that Paris Saint-Germain offered Delict 20 million euros per year. That's outrageous money. That's like twice the wage of the highest earner at Liverpool, which I think is, is, is Mohamed Salah. That's almost twice the wage of Mohamed Salah. I don't think Liverpool can compete with that. And not even Barcelona can compete with those wages. And I frankly, I don't think a 19-year-old centre-back should command those kind of wages. But of course, Paris Saint-Germain is one of the richest clubs in the world right now. They can splash the cash anytime they want. So, I don't think we will sign the league in all honesty, but we will definitely sign a new centre-back if, if uh, Lovren leaves to AC Milan. And I think that would be the perfect time for Lovren to leave Liverpool, because he just won the Champions League, so he reached a big goal for himself to win a major trophy at Liverpool. And I think um, Liverpool also, at 29 years old, 
Lovren will not get much better than this. He will only get worse. And I think if we don't sell a Lovren right now, in one or two years, we might get only half or a quarter of the transfer fee that Lovren would command right now. And Lovren's playing style would be ideal for the Serie A, which is a much, much slower league, much less physically demanding. And I'm sure, not sure how, how, how much Lovren can still play in the Premier League. I mean, last season already was hit with he was hit with so many injuries he missed like more than half of the season so maybe it's time for Liverpool to sell Lovren and maybe sign a young centre-back to boost uh, the squad numbers or an older experienced but not expensive guy and and Van Dijk posted a brilliant message on Instagram saying and I quote, I've had a few days to reflect now at the end of what's been an unbelievable season. We achieved great things this season at Liverpool as a team. And I feel proud to be part of such an incredible club with this group of players. To be European champions is a dream come true. We are all now hungry for more success and we will continue to give all we can to achieve that. I'm also excited about the future with the national team and we will look to build on the promising season we have just had with the Netherlands. Thank you for all your support over the last few months and I will see you after a break ready to go again and he <laughs> he posted a sun emoji and a smiling emoji so I'm sure that Van Dijk is off to a great holiday and he deserved it. He has been I think one of the player of the seasons of Liverpool, it would be very difficult to select the player of the season, but I think it's either Van Dijk, Salah or Mane. Those three players have been outstanding, but a lot of Liverpool players had great seasons. I think maybe Van Dijk is standing out by how much influence he had uh, on Liverpool's great season. Alisson also is a contender for the player of the season. Let's not forget about him. He was the man of the match in the Champions League final and... Uh, he was the reason why we even got there uh, by saving uh, all of Barcelona's shots. Fabinho explained that his first season at Liverpool wasn't easy, but it was a great season. And uh, I want to talk about Fabinho because he took a few months to get accustomed to the Liverpool playing style and everything. And Jurgen Klopp was, I think, right to keep Fabinho on the reps and Liverpool were in a great position that we didn't have to rely on Fabinho week in week out from the first week of the season so we could train um, Fabinho uh, behind the scenes on how the, the specific things are working in the Liverpool system so this is what Fabinho said overall I think my first season at Liverpool was good in my first season I knew there would be a learning and settling in period. I went through this. It didn't last that long but I remember it wasn't easy starting afresh. I was left out for a few matches even though I was telling myself that I needed to work hard and be patient. It's not easy being out of the team. But that's in the past now. I started playing more and the more you play the more you can enjoy your football. I think I became an important part of the team. I gave the manager another option he could defend, def depend upon. So I think it was a really good season. The travesty for me is that Fabinho wasn't selected for the Brazilian national team. So he won't have a chance to win the Copa America with Brazil. Firmino and Alisson will be the starting players. And I think Fabinho maybe should be in there. He definitely had a much, much better season than, Cas than Casemiro, the Real Madrid defensive midfielder. But maybe Casemiro is a, like a little bit of a bigger name in international football because of how many trophies and titles he won with Real Madrid in the past five years. But Fabinho on form should be in the Brazilian national team. And I'm so, so happy for Fabinho. How many years have we... Uh, been crying out for a player like Fabinho not since Javier Mascherano left Liverpool to go to Barcelona we we didn't have a player like Fabinho and we missed the player like Fabinho so many times and I think Fabinho is also one of the reasons why Liverpool only conceded something like 20 goals in the Premier League with a great, great defensive record. Van Dijk and Alisson are also major reasons, but Fabinho has been a colossus in the, in the midfield and I'm, I'm very, very happy that we signed him. And Fabinho picked out Sadio Mane as a man who helped him 
both on the pitch and off the pitch. This is what Fabinho said about Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane is a genuinely impressive player. He's tireless, playing in every game with such high levels of intensity and concentration. His technical ability goes without saying. He always makes a difference for us. He's a complete player. He gives you the option of a short pass or a long ball. He contributes to the build-up and creation of play as well. He's a great player in amazing form, which is really important for his confidence. Off the page, I chat with him quite a bit as we both speak French. My French is still better than my English. He's a great lad. Sadio has been a really important player for us this season. And Sadio Mane maybe has been a little bit underrated this season because I think Sadio Mane had as good a season as anybody at Liverpool, as good a season as Salah, as uh, Van Dijk. Maybe in the middle of the season Sadio Mane didn't score a lot of goals but when Salah had that goal scoring drought of not scoring for eight, ga eight games in a row, Sadio Mane was the player who carried Liverpool on his back. He was scoring in like 11 or 12 games he scored like 10 goals or something like that he had went, went on a crazy goal scoring run and without that we wouldn't be able to go through in the Champions League remember that he scored two goals away at Bayern Munich which was very important in the Champions League as well and also we wouldn't be able to run Manchester City so so close in the Premier League title race because without Mane having this great form Salah was off form, Firmino was a little bit off form Liverpool would have dropped a lot of points and Man City would have coasted to the Premier League title so I, I have a huge admiration and big big credit to uh, Sadio Mane and what he did um, what he did for Liverpool this season is nothing short of incredible and finally he is getting the goal scoring numbers up there with the best in the league. I mean, Sadio Mane finished as top scorer in the Premier League and he scored 25 goals in total. And I really hope that that continues and that next season, I hope that Mane scores another 20 goals. That would be brilliant. And Liverpool got a little bit lucky with the fixtures at the beginning of the season. So we played the Community Shield final before this Premier League season begins. But we play the UEFA Super Cup final against Chelsea on August the 14th after the first game of the Premier League season and where Liverpool got lucky is that we play on the Friday which is August the 9th so we will have five days between the first Premier League game and the Community uh, sorry the European Super Cup final but Chelsea got very unlucky with the scheduling because not only do they play Manchester United away from home on August the 11th on a Sunday so they have to travel to Manchester, but then they have to travel to Istanbul where the European Super Cup final takes place. So Chelsea have two days less rest than Liverpool and also they have to do quite a lot of traveling. Traveling to Manchester and then back and then traveling to Istanbul, their players will be very tired and they also lost Eden Hazard and they won't have uh, another new signing coming in apart from Pulisic who they already signed on a pre-contract because remember that Chelsea have a transfer ban on them for two consecutive transfer windows so I really hope that Liverpool will be able to win the European Super Cup because it's still a European trophy Liverpool already have three European Super Cups and I want Liverpool to win as many trophies as possible and I really hope that we do it and honestly if we play to the best of our ability we should be able to beat Chelsea in that European Super Cup final. So we shall wait and see what happens in that game, but I'm really looking forward to it. And Alisson compared Liverpool to the Brazilian national team. That is very, very interesting. He said this, and I quote, The technical ability of Brazil and Liverpool is very good. When we recover the ball, we always attack and seek the best option. And our team has evolved a lot this year by knowing how to control the game when needed. When the game is difficult, we slow it down with more passes. Last year, we played too high up and suffered many goals from counter-attacks. This year, we were more consistent defensively that's something we try to do with the Brazilian national team as well of course the players want to attack they are creative but working the ball and trying 
tiring rival is important in football and that, ma and that makes a winning team. Good luck to Brazil for the Copa America. I will be rooting for them because Firmino and Alisson could win another international trophy and that would be brilliant for, for their confidence as well. So let me know how you found this video. I really hope that you found it informative and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice evening. See you later guys. Goodbye.